Hi, and welcome to our first official sociology lecture. Um, the first thing we should talk about is what sociology is. Sociology is a type of social science. Social science is what I spent a whole bunch of time studying. Um, it is an academic study that focuses on one why question. In fact, why questions are going to be really important all semester long. Why questions are really important to academics in general. That the reason why we have education, the reason why we have learned things is because human beings are innately very curious. And we like to ask why questions. Um, it's the best form of learning. The best form of learning is not, as you might have been led to believe, memorizing facts and statistics. Rather, the best form of education is being curious of your own right and learning how to ask the questions, learning how to ask the right questions in the right ways, and learning the ways in which to find your own answers to those questions. In social sciences, our major overarching question is why do people do what they do? Other forms of social sciences um, are the rock star big brother to sociology that everybody knows, which is psychology, uh, human development, anthropology, um, in some circles, political science, criminology. All of these different subjects ask the why question, why do people do what they do in slightly different ways. Um, in psychology, you're studying the individual human being. In anthropology, you're talking about culture and the history of humanity. In sociology, which is what you're studying now, you're asking the why question about people as in, why do groups of people do what they do? Sociology is the study of people in groups. And so we're going to be looking at things like cultures and nations and countries and families and social institutions like religion and education and gender and how society constructs its rules that we all live by. And what I love about social sciences is that we're all social scientists. We're naturally social scientists because we're curious about ourselves. We're human beings and we've always been curious about ourselves. You're all social scientists. The difference between what we do every day as human beings and the academics is that we ask in academics the why question in very particular ways. So for example, you might be asking a why question about society um, when you're sitting behind someone in traffic at a traffic light. You're sitting behind them in the traffic light, and the traffic light turns green, and they don't go. And we all get really frustrated. And if I'm sitting behind someone like that, I go, what's wrong with them? They're such a jerk. Why didn't they go? And what I have done is I have asked the why question. Why did that person not go when the light turned green? And I've come up with what's known in scientific studies is a hypothesis. My hypothesis is that this person is a jerk. Now, a lot of us then take that hypothesis, not knowing it's a hypothesis, and we act on it. I might get angry at this person. I might flip them the bird. What makes me or any of us different at this point, if you want to become an academic, is to consider the possibility that there are other hypotheses that may be equally as true. So for example, the person may not have gone when the light turned green because they were dealing with an unruly child, or they were texting, or they were changing the radio station, or maybe they had a medical condition, or maybe their car had broken down. Now at this point, I'm becoming more academic by considering alternative answers to my question, my why question. Why did this person do what they did? It's at this point that I start to become more academic because I start to lose my bias. In order to be a good academic, you have to be as objective as possible. Now, this is particularly difficult in the social sciences because we're all people and we are all ingrained with so much bias we don't even know it that we jump to conclusions based upon our prior experience. And that doesn't make bias bad inherently. It doesn't make us bad. It makes us people. And it makes us people with history and belief systems that we're not always consciously aware of. Like the fact that I might assume that this person is a jerk. 
If I'm able to start expanding those hypotheses and come up with the idea that they may be something other than a jerk, I'm starting to put my own bias aside. And this is important in academic studies. So now I'm equally considering all the different hypotheses. I'm not giving weight to one or the other. And that's really the practice that we need to put in place. We need to be objective versus subjective. Subjective is a word that means open to interpretation. Subjective information really depends upon how people think about it. It comes from that place of bias. It comes from that place where we have our preconceived notions. Objective information is information that is fact that we can all agree upon. So for example, we can objectively say that we're sitting in a room right now, or I'm sitting in a room right now. That's objective information. You can see the walls of the room behind me. Subjective information would be that the wallpaper is ugly. Now, I don't really love this wallpaper, so my subjective take on it is that perhaps it is ugly. Other people might think it's beautiful, and that's what makes it subjective, is that it's open to interpretation. Now, when you're looking at your hypotheses, in order to continue to be unbiased, and really come up with the most objective information possible, you need guidance and you need structure. And those structures in the academic terms come in the place of perspectives or hypotheses. And you'll see this in your book. Sociology has three main perspective or theories. Um, you're lucky in this way because psychology has many, many theories that you have to learn how to use. Sociology just has the three. The purpose of the perspectives, the purpose of the major theories in any academic study is to help us to answer the why questions, to help us to figure out which one of our hypotheses is most likely to be true. Now, it's also important to note and I always say this in sociology and in all social sciences, that unlike the hard sciences like geology and biology and chemistry, there is no law of gravity. That is, because human beings are changeable and fluid, a lot of our theories and a lot of the data you glean in the social sciences is also changeable and fluid. So while we're looking for objective information, we also have to be open to the fact that this information can change over time. And so when you're looking at and critically analyzing any information in any social science, I encourage you to always question. Don't ever assume anything is true just because you're reading it in an academic textbook, just because a professor tells you that you also have to learn your own critical thinking and it has to pass the sniff test that there is certainly social science information out there that was gleaned from older demographics, um, which demographics is statistics that you glean from populations. Um, so things that you get from surveys or censuses. Uh, so older demographics or older methods of research or different cultures or different time periods that doesn't really apply anymore or doesn't make any sense, or perhaps the researcher who put it together was biased him or herself. 